What's going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I edit my videos. Okay, so for those that don't know, I use Vegas Pro 14 to edit. I've always been using Sony Vegas since Sony Vegas Pro 11 was released. And to me, I think it's the best and I think it's the easiest one to use. And for those that don't know, I haven't always done face cam on my tutorials. I only started face cam about a month and a half ago. And with that, there is now a bit of a difference to my editing. So first of all, I would drag my face cam into Sony Vegas alone or Vegas Pro 14 alone. And the reason for this is because I actually add some effects to the face cam to make it look better. The camcorder I use is over two years old, so it's not the best, but it is still good. And since I don't have space to add lighting, I can't make the camera look better. So with that, I have to add some video effects to make it look better. So the ones I add, I add on brightness and contrast. And as you'll see, I have my presets already saved for this. I also add color curves. Again, I have a preset here. And then the final one I add on is known as soft contrast, which is down here. Again, I have my preset. Now this is the final result. However, most of the time I come to the brightness and contrast and I usually put the brightness up to 0.065. And as you'll see already, that just looks so much more better. So if I split this in half, this is before and this is after. And you can tell it's gone from like a hard blue look to a more yellowish warm feeling. And then from there, I also need to render out the face cam by itself. And there's a reason for that, which I will show you later on in the edit. Now from here, um, it does take a long time to render. And the reason for that is because the file size of the camcorder is usually two to three gigabyte. And of course we've added more effects. So then it takes much longer to edit or to render. Most of the time it takes around 30 to an hour and a half or sometimes even two hours. But anyway, once that is done, I can now finally begin my editing. So at the top here, I have my face cam, which is the edited version. Below I have my recorded version of the screen recorder. And of course I use OBS to record my videos. Now I always right click my video properties, disable resample and uncheck maintain aspect ratio and the same with my face cam. Now the camcorder mic I never use, it's always on to record and that helps me sync it up. The OBS recording, that is, that, that is what uses my mic. For example, it's using my microphone right now. If I open up OBS, as you'll see, I'm using my microphone and this is um, much easier to sync up. So as you'll see, all I need to do is sync this up and there we go, it's all synced up. Then I would right click this track and delete it. So now I only have this audio. Now I don't actually use this audio either. I actually export this audio track right here to Audacity to make my voice sound better. So this is my voice without the effects and this is it with the effects. To me it sounds better and uh, you do all that in Audacity. If you want to know how to do that, I will link a video in the description because I've covered it before. So I come to my folder and I usually just name it voice. I misspelled it there, but oh well. Drag and drop it onto the next video track. And now this is automatically going to be synced up. Then I'll select this, press U on my keyboard, delete it, and then drag this up here. And then I'll highlight all of them by holding shift and selecting the top track, press G. And now they're grouped together. So they'll all move together at once. Now the intro to this tutorial is a bit different. This is when I showed you how to do the appear and disappear effect with smoke in Vegas Pro 14. So this was recorded separately. So as you'll see, it's already rendered out and just like that, I just entered it in right here. But what I always do, I add a fade into the audio. That's why it's quieter here. And I also add a fade into the video. Now the next thing I do, I come to the event pan and crop. Now I come over to mask and then I select preset and then I have my face cam preset. And as you will see, this is how I like to have it. I like to have these lines or this middle box right on my shoulders. So it creates a nice square. Then from there, the way I position it, I come to track motion, make sure I'm on the first keyframe. And then of course I have my preset and it's face cam too. Face cam was another face cam I was using when I was first starting out using face cam. And then if I put this here, it's in position ready for me to just put the overlay on top. So I'm now ready to finally begin the edit it is a bit more of a longer process. So uh, also for those wondering, I use standard Apple earphones, no fancy headphones or anything, just Apple earphones. I've been using them for the past two years, no problems. And yeah, it helps me edit my videos. 
Another thing I should mention, when I edit my videos, I usually set this to preview and auto. This just gets rid of the lag when I'm actually watching it back, so it helps me edit. And the next thing I do is I split through everything. So I find where I'm talking, where I'm not talking, what I need to cut out, and the mistakes. Yes, I do make mistakes, and mainly it's in the intro. Okay, so you get the idea, uh, I'm just going through splitting the parts, trimming them. And the next thing, uh, well once everything is split up, I'm not going to do it right now just to keep the video a bit short, I would simply go through and find the part where I need to zoom into certain parts. So for example, so right here I tell you to use video effects. So uh, I find the part where I actually say it, so it's right there, I press S on my keyboard, come to the start, come to the event pan and crop. And then I usually only have lock aspects ratio checked. Only this one, not size about center. And then I simply drag in from the corner, like so. Then X out of this, I'd press Control C. I mean, I'd right click it, select copy, and then paste it into the next uh, part where I'm going to be showing video effects again. And I would simply keep it there until I put it onto something else. So for example, right now I'm saying drag on the pure green screen. So I'll split it right here. I'll come to the event pan and crop, right click and select restore. So then you can see that I'm dragging it onto the green screen over here. And then the other type of editing I do is when I zoom into, or when I make things pop out, for example, the preview screen along with the track motion or the event pan and crop. So I'll show you how I do that now. So this is how this part works. As you can see, I've split it into parts of these last three clips here. I would hold shift and make sure they're all highlighted, press U on my keyboard to separate them, right click, insert another video track, press Control C so they're copied, Control V, duplicate this video track, and then we have three of the same things. Now the reason for that is because I blur the background, one shows the preview and one shows the track motion box. Now the top one or the top track is usually the screen because I want that to be on top. So I come to mask, then I zoom into it so I can get a accurate point in this, come to this rectangle tool and I simply drag it out like so and then expand it out. Now I don't have a preset for this because every time I make a preset somehow it always changes position so it doesn't work and then from there I right click copy and then paste it onto the rest of this track here. Then I come to the bottom one which is right here, make sure I'm at the start, come to the masking tool and this time I'm masking the track motion box because that's what I want the focus on. I want the focus to be on the track motion, but I also want you to know what's happening at the same time. So then you know what yours will look like as well. So then right click, copy, and then paste event attributes onto the other two. Now what I do, I lay down markers, one at the start, one at the end. And then I come across two seconds. That's how long it usually takes for them to pop out. So as you see, we're on 41. I want to go to 43. I want to press M on my keyboard. Then I'm going to come to the end. I'm on 12. I want it to be on 10. So it's two seconds to go back down, which is right there. Press M on my keyboard again. Now we come to the track motion. And from here, I want to scroll out. I press create a keyframe. And then that marker we created, we select it. As you'll see, we'll expand this part out like so. Then I come to this one here, I press add keyframe, just pressing that button so it stays the same. Then I come to the end, right click and restore. And this creates that effect. Then we do the exact same thing to the top track. So first of all, create a keyframe for the very first one up here. Then we come across and then we bring up the screen. Sometimes I make the screen bigger, sometimes I leave it the same, but I want it there. Then I come here, add the keyframe, come to the last one, right click and restore. Now this is the effect we have created. So if I come across, as you'll see, that is what will happen. We've made them both pop out just like that. And then the final thing, of course, I blur the background. Now for this, I come to video effects, I come over to Gaussian blur, and I always add a light blur. And now this part also requires animating, and I come to the animation buttons. And this part here where that marker I set out, I lay down the keyframe. The first keyframe, I set them both to zero like so, and then we can drag on light bearer in the middle because we don't animate that one. But then the final clip, 
we animate this as well. So we come to the animation buttons, add a keyframe, come to the end, and then we set this to zero like so. Now, if you watch this slowly, the background's gonna slowly blur as them two things are popping out towards you. Now, yes, this does require a lot more time in the editing. However, to me, I like to make my viewers see everything and I like to make them focus on the certain points. And I like you to be able to see what's happening to your video. Otherwise, if you watch it or watching the tutorial, you might not know what to expect from your video. And then if I come to the end over here, you'll see that they go back into place like so. And yes, that part is messed up. So we actually messed up that part. Okay, no problem, very easy fix. Uh, all I do, I bring this back up there, bring this to here. This is at four seconds. That means I need to look for two seconds, which is right here, bring this there. Uh, right, well, we don't need these now. So we can select them, the top two, press U and delete. Then we can take off the blur we created and then we can simply come to the track motion and bring these two back. Then we do the exact same to the top track as well. So control C for this keyframe, come to this one and paste it in there. And then now it's fixed. So if I come across, that is how it will look. And of course, we also need to animate the blur on this one now. So we come to the animation buttons, add a keyframe, last keyframe, we turn it all the way off. So now if I come across this one, just like that, that is what it looks like. And yes, like I said, it does take a lot more time, but it does look better in my opinion. And then once I'm done editing, that is when I add the overlay for my face cam and the lower third. So I'll show you that very quickly. Now for the face cam overlay, it's very simple. Just drag and drop it, spread it across the video. And my face is already in that box. For the lower third, a bit more different because we have to put this on another video track. And then these are my lower thirds here. So it's all of these uh, here. I drag and drop them into my projects media. And then of course the first one is, do you want to request a tutorial? And that's always at the start. From transitions, I come to S underscore wipe it diffuse. I created these presets myself, well one preset. This one, it gives it the way it comes in. And then the one that goes out is the preset I made. And then I'll spread them out across my timeline. Then the final thing I'll show you is how I do my outro. There is actually a bit to it. So right here, it's my outro. I press U here to delete the OBS recording on that certain section. I drag this down to this track. Then I come to the mask in right here. Make sure I'm at the start. Right click reset mask so I become full screen again. And then I trim this down and I need my outro. So here's my outro right here. Just drag and drop them into my projects media. Makes things easier for me. I do the YouTube end screen template first. And then this is how I do this part. So I've been getting a lot of questions about this lately and it's actually very simple. So as my hand comes in right there, I drag this back. And for those that don't know, I always like to make my transitions one second. And then from there, I come to transitions and I look for S underscore dissolve distort, I think. This is the one right here. So I drag and drop this there. And then I add, make this 20 seconds. And the reason for that is because YouTube end screen is 20 seconds. So as you can see, we're on 42, which means we need to go to 602. So I find it by clicking across. Then we need to spread this out. And just like that, it's done. And then of course, the final thing, I add the music in. There's a bit to this as well that uh, you probably won't expect. So it drops up here, right there. I always split it, delete the start of it. And then I sync this up to where the end of the transition is. So when it drops, the transition will also end. Then I drag this back. I only drag it back onto the part where my face becomes full screen. I fade this in. Then I press V on my keyboard, double click here. I bring this to minus 13.4 which is right there. Then I double click about here then double click here. And then this is when the volume increases to full screen. So this means I've lowered the volume and I'm fading it in. So you're able to hear my voice in the outro. And yes, that part does lag because it's a transition, of course. But if I just go through with keyframes, that is how it will end up looking. 
But that is how I edit my videos. Um, it's a bit complicated for some people maybe, but to me it's very simple because it's the same steps I always do now. And I get through it within about 30 to an hour depending on how long the video is. Now if you want to know my rendering settings, a link to it will be in the description. And remember, if you want to know how to make your voice sound better in Audacity, a link to it will also be in the description. If you want to know how to make lower thirds, a link to it will be in the description. The outro I use, I've made it as a template and I've given it to you guys before, link will also be in the description. Outro song, link is in the description. And I think that is everything I can give you. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and peace.